SimCity on the NES? What? Welcome back to a very special episode of Saturday Afternoon Gaming. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we are playing SimCity on the NES, which are words I thought I would never say, because in my entire life, there's never been a SimCity on the NES, but joke's on me, there was. This is the long-lost SimCity for NES. It was in development around the same time as SimCity for the Super Nintendo, and there's this whole interesting backstory of this is actually a prototype game that was never finished. Um, and people found it over the holidays and they dumped the ROM onto the internet for everyone to play. And wow, what a crazy discovery. And I've played a few versions of SimCity on this channel. I've long wanted to play the Super Nintendo version, but when I heard that the NES version was found and existed, I had to push aside everything I planned to play for today, and I had to get my hands on the SimCity. So we're going to be playing some SimCity here. We're going to start a new city. And uh, this is entirely on NES. This is, of course, on an NES emulator, actually, because this is a ROM file. Um, again, this game was never released. But uh, anyway, here's our choice for maps. What's the next map look, look like? Let's just let's just see out of curiosity. Um, okay. You know what? I actually I actually liked uh, the first map that it gave us. There it was sort of like an island. I like this. This is it's it's you know literally its own continent. So we are not only going to create a city, we are going to create a country, a gameopolis, paradise of a country. And input your city's name. The city's name will be uh, will be Utopia Land. No, that's kind of stupid. Let's just call it. Let's just call it Jayville. I don't know. We I think we always go with Jayville. So there's there's various different Jayvilles in existence out there. Where is Y? Wait, is this is a Y? Oh, it's like a typewriter. Uh, we'll call it J. So in every SimCity I've ever played, I'm pretty sure I just always call my town Jayville. Um, I'm not very creative, guys. It's hard to be creative on the spot. Input your favorite word. Um, that is a dicey question to ask kids. So this game was supposed to release on the NES. You can just imagine what kids would have put in here. You know, like just something like totally inappropriate. We're going to put peanuts because why not? Oops. Uh... He not oh my god. I, I cannot type on this thing. That for some reason the D-pad is like very sensitive here. Our favorite word is peanuts. Welcome, welcome to the year 2019. Um we're gonna play this game on easy because why not? You know, we're not trying I'm not trying to prove anything to you guys, we're just having fun here today. Um but this is it, Sim City on the on the NES. Look in all its glory. This is totally awesome. Okay, first things first, we have to decide where we want to build our power plant. Um, I guess let's have... Okay, we're going to have two two areas of the city. Hmm, okay, hold on. This, this is a big decision. Where do we put the power plant? I guess let's put it down here. Why not? So we need a power plant. We can go coal or nuclear. Coal is 3,000 and nuclear is 5,000. You know what? It's the year 1900. January 1st, 1900. They didn't have nu nuclear power back then. They just, everything was coal based, baby. And they didn't care about pollution. They would breathe in that black smoke uh, and like they'd eat it up because they were patriots and they would enjoy it. All right, we'll build a, a few industrial areas here by the coast. We'll pollute our nice, lovely coastline with uh, industry, harmful, harmful industry. And uh, off to the races we go. So my plan will be to basically kind of establish an industrial area here. We'll build, how about, let's see. Let's build down, I guess. We'll build some commerce down this way, and then we'll build some houses down here. So we'll sort of have layers to this city. Anyway, while I do that, um, I will talk to you guys um, about SimCity on the NES. So this game, um, was shown actually like there were there are old um nintendo magazine articles and stuff showing off this game um it was even sh shown i think at the consumer electronics expo of like 1991 or something like that 
but it was never released. It was never released. So this is this is as I say a prototype version of the game. Now I think uh, you know nobody knows for sure, but I'm pretty certain the reason it was never released uh, has to do with the fact that Nintendo was right right about to release SimCity on the Super Nintendo, and the Super Nintendo was fairly new at the time, so they probably wanted to. Um, you know, really, really sort of support the Super Nintendo, make sure people were buying Super Nintendos, and uh, they kind of maybe viewed this as a competition. So they thought, you know what, let's not, let's not release this game for the, uh, for the NES, and instead let's make everyone buy Super Nintendos, and lo and behold, it worked. Um, this game actually, you know, it's, I should talk about the game, it's fairly impressive, um, like, I've never really seen this before. I booted this up for, like, uh, like 30 seconds before I started making this video for you guys today here. Just to make sure I knew what the controls were and stuff, so we didn't start playing. And then, like, I figured, like, oh, God, I don't know how to control things. Um, so I, I'm kind of, like, learning as I go here. But, like, I'm, like, the graphics, they look, not only look very nessy, like, Nintendo-y, but they also look... Like very not very good, you know. Like like all things considered, um, so I'm kind of color me impressed here so far. Uh, let's build some houses because we need those. So we'll build our our residential area. We'll start here. Here's the expensive harbor front property right here. Um, can I build another one? Oh yes, I can. Sweet. All right. So this is where the rich people live. This is uh, this is Richville, and they do need power in Richville. There we go. And maybe we could build one more right here, right? The rich get richer. And then we'll build some slums uh, towards the inside of the island. So the rich people live uh, sort of uh, in, pen in penthouses and stuff here, where all the, uh, the poor folks are going to have to squabble. Let's make some slums. Let's make some of the, like, slummiest slums that we can create in SimCity. You know what? They're going to be right next to uh, some industrial areas. <laughs> we'll see if anyone chooses to live here. Um, so we'll build slums around an industrial area. And this will be like a walled off portion of the city where like criminals are sent and stuff like that. So we'll build some walls somehow uh, around this once we have sort of cordoned off this area of the city. There we go. Nice and slummy. And uh, let's have a road. I know none of this is power yet. It's all in development. Power is coming. Um, so anyway, yes, over the holidays, um, an organization called the Video Game His uh, Historical Foundation um, was able to secure a ROM copy of this game. And so here's, you know, by, by the way, the, the, that organization that I just mentioned, they are totally awesome. Their mission is to preserve old video games and that is something that I have long said is something that uh, hey look even like there's like a day night or a season cycle or something like the palettes keep changing it's really neat also I'm digging the music the music's awesome um, but preserving old video games I've long said is like an important thing to do because you know there's so many great old games out there and like if you don't preserve them they're just gonna get forgotten and like it's it's truly like a loss to us all when um, something you know a, a game uh that was really good in the past just ceases to exist and goes away you know this is a game that nobody ever saw before nobody ever saw this game um until um the prototypes were found that's crazy that's crazy anyway we uh here's our fire fund police fund we have no education our town is really bare bones right now some cities and uh you know uh, a walled off slummy area of the city where criminals are sent to fight to their death. Um, but it only costs us $35 a year. Um, or, or we only gain $35 in taxes. Well, imagine having a city with so little population. You only collect $35. I guess it's only two houses. See there? Two houses that are actually paying for anything. And one factory. So anyway, we'll let, uh, we'll let the power, the juice flow to this part of the city here. Um, let's connect some some power lines. Everything is nice and juiced up. There we go. All right, now people are slowly starting to live in there. Now, how can we build a wall? What could we use to build a wall? Um, so that's a park. We don't want a park. We, we, you know what? We want the park for the rich people. 
Rich people will not only live near the water, but they'll live in a, a very parky area. So we can like build a nice like little uh, community for them. Um, what can we use? What can you what can you wall off a city with? I guess I guess they never planned for this contingency. They were never like, you know what a feature that users need is is the ability to wall off some of their citizens into some maximum security prison kind of uh, residential zone. All right, whatever. Let's let's just actually build the city. Enough being silly. Enough being silly. Let's build the city. So there we go. This is a very you know, some cities are built on a grid, not Jville. Jville is built on an anti-grid. It's the exact opposite of a grid. You've become a town. Your population is 2,360. So here's Mayor Wright, who was uh, an addition to the SimCity franchise from Nintendo. And of course, if you've played the Super Nintendo SimCity, you recognize him. Um, I, of course, have not, but I still know of him. One day, I will play the SimCity... Uh, on the Super Nintendo, I just honestly have not gotten around to it yet. But it is on my to-do list one day, guys. You don't have to tell me how awesome it is. I know. I know. Um, but yeah, so I guess two prototype copies of this game were discovered. And one was sold to a collector. And the other one, it looks like, was going to be sold to a collector too. Until the Video Game Historical Foundation was able to... Um, I don't know if they bought the cartridge or they just were allowed to dump the game off of it. But either way, we now have a digital copy of this game for all of history to play. And that is the that is the job of the historical foundation to preserve these kinds of games. And let me tell you, that is that that is a mission I can get behind. Uh, that is that is, uh, you know, J approved. Let's actually, I guess, just fill in some of these gaps with parks. I, I really did not plan my city out very well. It is, it is clearly just, um, you know, it, it, it's just whatever I think at the moment is what I, what I throw down. I'm not, there's no like grand plan to this city here. Um, our industry up here is doing okay. I guess maybe this, oh no, there's a road here. I was going to say maybe this one's not developing because there's no road here, but there's a road. So I guess let's build a bit more industry up here. So people have places to go. It's uh, 1901. What did people do in 1901? They worked in factories, I guess. So let's build factories for people to work in. <laughs> you know, I've always thought it's interesting that SimCity starts you off like in the year 1900. But then I was thinking about it and like, it's kind of true that like a lot of like, like weren't like cities were built like a long time ago, you know? Um, you don't hear of a lot of modern cities starting. Like, like think of all the cities in, you know, North America. They all kind of were started in the early 1900s or sometimes the 1800s if they're really old historical cities or whatever. But you don't see, like, city established 1987, you know? Like, in the 80s, people weren't building cities. They were just using the ones that they already had, if that makes sense. So it's sort of like... It's sort of like, yeah, the early 1900s were when people built cities. But, like, nobody, nobody goes out and just starts a city anymore. People just don't seem to do that. I don't know why... I don't know why people don't do that, but people just don't seem to do that. Um, and I, I wonder if we just have enough cities. I mean, I guess what you see is a lot of um, smaller cities um, sort of evaporating as everyone moves to the big cities. So, of course, you see big cities getting bigger, but you don't see a lot of, like, new cities being founded, is my point. Um, so SimCity is accurate in the sense of, like, you always start in the 1900s, and that's just that's just how it is. Um, all right, our, our attempts to wall off this part of the city into some kind of weird hellscape where criminals fight to the death has kind of failed. Now it's just kind of a nice community that happens to have a few power plants in the middle. Um, you know what? I will not let that stand. We're going to evict these, these companies. Boom, boom. You thought I wouldn't do it, but I did. I don't care about industry. Industry will come back, baby. That's the one thing I know about industry. Industry will always be back. Will always be back. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to keep all this. Oh, look, the houses are leaving. Uh oh, I think a lot of people were supported by jobs in those factories. Maybe people loved it. They're like, I'm so close to the factory. It's awesome. I, 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 I bulldozed those, those mega corporations to make a park for you people for a nice place to live. Please don't move to a rival community. That is that is the opposite of what I wanted to occur. Uh-oh. Yeah, things are 
things are going going from bad to worse. Okay, this this has always confused me. I know people have explained it to me before. When R is high, does that mean I have too many residential or I need more? Um, I don't know. And when C is low, do I ha do I need more commercial or do I, I need fewer? You know, I, I can never remember. Anyway, let's let's go ahead and we're going to replace the industry that we so callously kicked out of our town up here. So that, uh, you know, if uh, Big Oil does want to set up some factories, there's plenty of zoned space for them. We welcome big industry in Jayville because people got to work somewhere. That's how it goes. In the 1900s, we did not know any better. There we go. All right. So there is there is industry up there. Uh, people can be happy with that. People can be happy or they can leave because Jayville is not about compromising. We do not do half measures in Jayville. It's full measures, baby. Um, we made 288 bucks in the 1900s with inflation. How much would that be? I'm curious. Probably, uh, probably be like two thousand dollars or something. So I will take it. Um, we're gonna have a bit of commerce here. We'll just go ahead and build it behind these houses because why? Why not? And then we will. Uh, build this so you know what I'm noticing is different in this NES version is that the residential commercial and all that the size of the plot is only two by two like see one two and one two tall but I think in the other sim cities it was three by three like if you go to the power plant up here I think this one is yeah this is so see it's it's three squares tall and it's three squares wide I'm pretty sure that was the size of the residential and commercial areas in the um, in the SimCity on computers and stuff like that. Um, I wonder why they made the change. I mean, I'm guessing they probably made the change because it was something like on NES, the maps had to be smaller. And so to still give you like a lot of space to play with, they were like, well, let's just make all the, um, make all the like little zones uh, a little smaller. Um, so you can get, you can get more bang for your buck out of the map. But uh, there we go. Right, I'm adding parks to try and retain property value here. Um, oh, look, these commerce buildings have actually built up. That's pretty good. You know what we probably need, by the way, are like, pr uh, I was going to say prisons. Police police stations and fire stations. So we should actually do that. Although, I would like to build a stadium first. Before we have law enforcement in this town, we're totally going to build a stadium. It's going to be on the water. And it's going to be like, right, will this work? Boom! Ocean View Stadium. That's where everyone wants to, to play sports. That is where all the good sports occur. There's one thing I know about running a town. It's that you need a sports team because they bring in a lot of tourism bucks. There you go. We got a railroad and a train station directly to the uh, stadium. We do have no power there. That was poorly thought out. Can we build a thing here? Yes, we can. Boom. All right, there we go. We've destroyed their beautiful waterfront property by adding power lines. But that's okay. They still got some waterfront down here. And you got to you gotta power up Ocean View Stadium. Or nobody's going to come. Or nobody's going to come. All right, so we decided we need a police station. So let's build one here. And oh, I should have built it here to take advantage of those power lines. Oh, we'll build a fire station there. Um, let's, you know what? Uh, nah, actually, let's build it over here. Let's go with, boom, police station. Okay, so we have two police stations. And we will need a fire station too by the way i like how this police station down here it's like not near a road or anything it's like if the cops get a call they have to run across the train tracks and get in their cars and then hit the roads so uh we didn't plan that very well either uh we are we're really running out of money though the city is slowly going bankrupt but that's okay there are police and fire and let's just throw the fire station here because why not um police and fire All right we're good Let's check out some of the maps and stuff that we have here. So what are all these things? That's the speed, that's fine. This is auto budgeting. Oh, we can summon disasters. Let's do that at the end of our video today. Um, all right, let's check out some evaluations. 
Is the mayor doing a good job? We have a 61% approval rating. I'll take that. Um, well, population is 5,600. Last year, 5,000 people moved to our city. That is insane. Uh, our city is worth $48,000. We are a town. Um, our score is 569. Annually, that declines by 84. I don't know why. Um, what are the worst problems? Housing costs. Really? I've, I've zoned so much housing. Like, what, what more? Like, there's literally unused plots of residential residential areas what could i do i don't know let you know what you know what i want to do i'm just going to turn up the speed and uh we're going to let oh it's it's already on fast okay i was going to say we're just going to let time fly um oh history 1901 becomes a town that's literally the the last seven events that happened to us that's the only one uh, let's check our maps here so this is a comprehensive view of our city Looks very beautiful. Here's our power grid. You can see all the electrical wirings um, of oops of our city. Okay, what else we got here? Let's check out the population. Um, let's see population density. Where is everybody living? I think I have a an idea. Um, oh, what an interesting grid. Okay, I guess the big squares mean a lot. Um, this game is unfinished, by the way, so I don't know if all this stuff's gonna work. Let's check out crime. How much crime we got in this city? Um, uh, we have some near the outskirts, I think? Or there's none in the outskirts? I don't... Okay, I don't 100% know how to read any of these. I suspect they're not 100% finished. That's okay. Um, when you play prototype versions of games, you gotta take them as they come. Um, but yeah, I, I wonder why they canned this version of SimCity. I mean, clearly, like... When I was a kid, if this had come out on the NES, I 100% would have bought this. Like, I think this this would have this would have made a good Nintendo game. Um, again, I mean, I guess there's the argument that they probably wanted uh, didn't want to distract from the uh, Super Nintendo. So, I mean, I guess that's why. But uh, I mean, you know, I guess that's not uncharacteristic for Nintendo. They also canceled Star Fox 2, which was a virtually complete game. Because they didn't want it competing with Star with the N64. So, I mean, Nintendo has done this kind of thing in the past. And then Star Fox 2, of course, was later released on the Super Nintendo Mini. And it was really awesome when they actually released that. Um, uh, we, we, are, we are actually going bankrupt, by the way. Okay, one last, one last hurrah. I guess we'll throw up a bit of industry because people want industry for some reason. That's, what the, uh, that's why the eye is so high. There we go. All right. Until we get more money, this is this is the city. This is all we got. Um, you know, interestingly, this was not the first SimCity game that was canceled. So originally, um, I, I mean, I'm, this is common video game trivia knowledge, but um, the the guy who invented SimCity, he he came up with the idea because he was having so much fun in the map editor of Raid on Bungling Bay that he decided, you know, making the maps is more fun than playing the game i should make a game around a map editor and that's sort of where SimCity came in and SimCity really is just a map editor where you just kind of get evaluated on your map and your map's a little dynamic like it comes to life after you build it and you see how effectively it plays out and you can make adjustments so SimCity is like kind of like a dynamic map maker um but the original version of SimCity actually um was not on, you know, DOS or PC or Amiga or any of those systems uh, that you might have played it on as a kid. It was actually from, uh, it was actually made on Commodore 64. And that version of the game was like never released. Uh, it came out years and years later. Uh, by the way, we're now losing money as a town. That means we got to up the taxes, baby. Um, and for right now, we're just going to go into debt. Uh, yeah, so they, they made a version of uh, SimCity on the Commodore 64, and as far as I know, that was not released back in the day. Um, and I don't know the full story of why. Maybe somebody knows why, and they can enlighten us in the comments down below. Man, my city is doing so bad. What what do we need? What do these people want? We've given them law and, and emergency services. We've given them uh, Ocean View Stadium. What do you people want? I mean, it is kind of far away from everything, but that's by design. We want people we want it to be like a big tri uh, trip. You know, it's 1903. We want Ma and Pa to get all gussed up in their tuxedos 
and drive the Ford Model T out to the edge skirts of town and then like look at these beautiful ocean views while they watch their, you know, Sandusky Huskers take on the like St. Louis Flappers or whatever the heck kind of old timey name the sports teams had back then. We want it to be kind of an event is what I'm saying. But nobody nobody appreciates the stuff we do for this town, man. We should just burn the whole place down. Which we very well we, we very well wait we very well may turn to that. If this this town does not turn around, we'll burn it down for the insurance money. We have the ability to burn it down, flood it, crash airplanes. We don't even have an airport. Also, nineteen oh three, I don't think there really were a lot of planes in the air. I don't think flight had been invented yet. But we can crash planes for some reason. We can summon a tornado. A tornado. We can summon the powers of Earth. This is like Captain Planet. Like, uh, you know, uh, Earth, air, uh, water, and fire. Yeah, Earth, wind, water, and fire. We have the powers of Captain America. Uh, or Captain uh, Planet. Not Captain America. We have the powers of Captain Planet here. We can destroy a town or, and also a monster. So we're going to be burning this sucker down for the insurance money, I think. Um, but meanwhile, let's just hope that it kind of picks up a bit. Um, and while this is happening, uh, yeah, so, so SimCity on the Commodore 64, don't know why it was never a thing, but it, it just never really materialized. Um, now, SimCity on the Super Nintendo added things like bank loans. It added Mr. Right, as we've already seen. It added presents, so when your city gets big enough, you get special presents from Mr. Right, and you can build special buildings like zoos and stuff. Um, all of that, by the way, was like thanks to Miyamoto. Like Miyamoto has like the magic touch. The guy just intuitively knows how to make games fun, and those are suggestions that proved so effective that like now all some cities have that kind of stuff. But back in the day, you know, the original SimCity was. It, it was it was a sandbox game, but it was more of a toy. And um, Miyamoto really sort of helped gamify it a bit more, which is pretty cool. Um, look, commerce is coming to our town. That's cool. But still, this area just does not want to develop. I don't know what we did wrong here, but, like, no one wants to live here. There's, like, one dude living in the rich part of town. We only have one rich guy. That sucks. Oh, actually, here, there's four people. There's four people. They like to live by the park and the water. They go for swims on the weekend, and uh, they their kids play in the park and so on. Um, anyway, we'll just continue. Oh, look, we actually have traffic. Look, a little bit of a little bit of NES traffic. Oh, it went away for for the briefest of moment. People were driving in our city. Um, all right, we're June. I do like how the palette changes. That's actually a feature that was not in the original computer version of the game, which is actually pretty cool. Probably another innovation of Miyamoto's here. Um, well, while we wait for our city to develop, uh, what else can we say about SimCity? Um, I feel like I've, so I've played two SimCities on my channel before, so I've definitely talked a lot about SimCity. Uh, I think I've said before how as a kid I always liked it. It felt like the Play-Doh of video games, where it's very just sort of, um, you just build stuff randomly and it's sort of like flow of consciousness, you know, uh, kind of an experience when you play SimCity where you just build things that feel right and... Um, you know, we have, we have an awesome public transit system in our city. People should really, you know, we're, we're way ahead of the curve. This is like better than New York City's transit system, I tell you. Goes everywhere in the city. Super easily. Um, but yeah. You know, this is, this is not SimCity related, but, um, recently, recently I've been watching, um, Bandersnatch on Netflix. All right, not watching, but I watched it. Um, that is the uh, Black Mirror episode that's kind of a choose-your-own-adventure. And I, I won't really give much away other than to say that the premise is that it's a, a kid in the 80s who's building a computer game that is a choose-your-own-adventure game. Uh, so he's like programming a ZX Spectrum in the episode, which is totally awesome. Uh, being Being a fan of retro games, just seeing like... You know, just just even if it wasn't a choose your own adventure episode, seeing an episode about a kid designing a game in the 80s for the ZX Spectrum. You know, had I been old enough and smart enough, I would, would have loved to have built my own computer game back in the 80s. Back in the day when like people would like lone wolf it. Like one guy would come up with an idea for a video game and he would program it and then he would sell it and he would make like thousands and thousands of dollars. That That's like a, a, a little... A fantasy of mine that will forever be unfulfilled of living at the time when computer games were simple enough that anyone could program them if you had the right idea and you were smart enough at the mathematics of it 
Um, but yeah, the, ep the episode was totally awesome. Uh, the choose your own adventure element was really creative, actually. I really found that uh, interesting. And I guess one other thing I should talk about, since we're just kind of waiting for our city to get some more income here, is that this Sunday, uh, which is basically tomorrow, um, I'm going to be live streaming Donkey Kong Country. Um, and I'm doing it just because. Just because it's a game that uh, I wanted to play for you guys for a while. It's not in the 1001 book. And I actually have time tomorrow to do this live. So I thought, you know what, let's set aside some time in the afternoon. Let's do this. So we're going to be live streaming some Donkey Kong Country. So uh, make note... Make note, if you're around in the afternoon, we'll start around 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, do come and check it out with us. And we lost money again. Time to underfund the police department. Uh, let's give them 50% of their budget. And same with the fire department. We're going to give them only 50% of their budget. Jeez, and we're still $126 in the hole. Okay. And look! All of <laughs> Jeez. All the residential areas have not developed. Okay. Okay, hold on. You know what? We, we, we got to do something about this. Um, we don't want to go to auto budget. Uh, what can we do here? Game, save city, load city. Um, good job, Mr. Mayor. Your fine city is growing very nicely. I don't see any problem areas, so keep up the good work. What are you talking about, dude? My city is a ghost town. Nobody wants to move to Jayville. Ocean View Stadium is not doing anything to bring in people. We have... L these meters are telling us to build more industry. Where do you want me to build it? There's... There's empty... There's empty industry lots everywhere. And if I'm reading this incorrectly and the opposite is true, then... Why is residential needing people? Because there's re empty residential lots everywhere. This, this makes no sense. Makes no sense. I don't know. Um, I feel like our attempt to build a city here... Like, so we've played SimCity on DOS. We've played it on Mac. And we've played SimCity 2000. I don't think in any of my SimCity runs have I had this hard a time getting the city to be populated. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that it's because it's a prototype. Uh... You know, realistically, that might have nothing to do with it, but that's my excuse. I'm playing a prototype. It's not my fault, guys. I'm actually a really good civic planner. You guys, you guys don't even know. It would bl if I actually showed you my civic planning abilities, it would blow your mind. And I really don't want to scare you like that. So I'm just showing you what you need to see to feel comfortable with yourselves and not feel like you're nobody compared to me. Because my city planning skills are unheard of. They're next level. That is that is my story, and <laughs> I am uh, I am sticking to it. Um, you know, another thing to think about that's kind of cool as we just sort of watch my city flounder here is that I feel like, like in the past, what, like say five years or so, there ha there has been like a number of like video game artifacts um, that we never thought we would find that we have found right like here let me like think about it for a second the super nintendo playstation the collaborative effort between sony and nintendo to make a super nintendo playstation um was found the prototype was found and repaired and now it's like traveling retro gaming shows if you don't know what i'm talking about look up um there's all sorts of good youtube videos and, and various people have done this but Basically, Sony and Nintendo were collaborating to create a CD version of the Super Nintendo that was called the PlayStation. Um, and Nintendo ended up backing out, and Sony had already done so much work that they were like, we'll just release the Sony PlayStation. And the Sony PlayStation only exists, therefore, because Nintendo had originally partnered with them. So, you know, there's that uh, that was found, the, the Super Nintendo PlayStation. That exists now. It was only the thing of legend. Um, the Atari ET Graveyard, you know, the the ET Atari game sold so poorly, and Atari produced so many copies of it um, that they couldn't just sell them because it would drive the property, the value of their ET game, which is already terrible. It would drive it just into the ground. And so, what did Atari do? They bought a plot of land, where was it, Nevada or somewhere, and they literally just buried all these unsold ET Atari games. So the Atari landfill. That exists, and people tracked it down. There's a documentary you can watch of, of people discovering it. 
Um, Star Fox 2, the unreleased game, right? As we already said, Nintendo released it on the Super Nintendo Mini. That's another thing that, like, people actually did have a prototype of that online, and you could play the ROM for years. But the actual game is sort of w- was officially released eventually. And uh, now we have this. Now we have SimCity, the SimCity prototype for the NES. So it, it kind of makes me wonder, like, what other gaming holy grails are we going to discover? You know, oh my god, my city's totally abandoned. Um, but what what other holy grails will we discover for uh, for for video games here, guys? I, re- I really wonder. Because um, cause I don't think it's over. I don't think this will be the last sort of unreleased prototype game that we end up discovering actually exists out there. Somebody at some point in time is going to find another one and another one and another one. And we're going to keep getting these like ancient gaming artifacts. I think it's called gaming archaeology um, or digital archaeology, you know, to go in and find these things. And it's frankly, it's I find it fascinating. I don't know about you guys, but I don't know. Do you guys are there any other sort of long lost games that you guys know about that you think would be cool to find? I mean, I can't think any off the top of my head, but I'm I know that there are plenty more out there. So I'm kind of curious. Um, our town is sucking, by the way. So here's what we're going to do. No taxes, baby! Alright, everyone. Come live in our glorious utopia. There is literally no tax. Come on, you... You mooches. Move into the city already, damn it. The city was doing better when this was an industrial core. I should just bulldoze these parks and, like... Uh... You know, bring it back. Just bring it back. Our population, by the way, look at it. 2360... 20, oh, it's actually growing. I was going to say, it just continues to shrink. It's kind of up at the top here, our population. You can watch it. You can see if it's going up or down. At one point, we had 5,000 people living in this city. Those were the glory days, the good years. Now, we're like half that population. Like, I just, I can't get people to move into the city. What is it? 1880? What the hell is happening? Seriously. I think I really screwed this up. 3,500? What? It's just ping-ponging all over the place. 4,000. All right, here we go. Here we go. 4,900. The fire departments need funding. They're not going to get any money. There's going to be literally zero income tax this year for the city. 5,300. If we can get to 10,000, then I'll turn taxes up to 5%. Uh, I mean, I'll probably have to turn them up to 5% no matter what, because we, we desperately need uh need money i'm just gonna unfund everything from public transit to the police to fire you people want to live in a tax-free utopia well you're gonna have no public services that is the compromise that you make hey we're actually getting 8600 we're actually getting maybe we will hit 10,000. Man, this is awesome if only there was something like this i could do to my youtube channel uh to like suddenly start a burst of growing like if i could like you know, if you guys pay taxes to watch my channel or something, like have a no tax year to like have everyone tune in, that'd be awesome. <laughs> um, hey, we've become uh, a city. Settle in and build your house. Ooh, I can build a house now. Boom, presents. Ooh, the White House. Wait, what? I live in the White House? Uh, okay, well, I don't want to live with, uh, I don't want to live with the, the regular uh, scum. So I'm going to I'm going to have a private estate down here. This is what's going to happen. Boom, that's my house. There's no electricity cuz foolishly I built it really far away from anything. And I can't even af- <laughs> I I can't afford to build roads to my house, let alone power. So we do have a town of 10,000. I did not think it would happen. We do. L- but we definitely do not have the we we don't even have the infrastructure to support the mayor's house oh well i i'm not gonna live there yet we'll just let that fall into disrepair while our city continues to grow all right here here's the megapolis that i was hoping for look all the commercial zones are building up all right we're we're heading in the right direction now so let's just let this city continue to evolve i don't understand why these are still not growing maybe i packed them too densely Maybe, can we bulldoze? I think bulldozing costs money. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna bulldoze a bunch of these. Oh, I can't even afford it. Okay. Maybe we need to create artificial scarcity. Maybe if people think that there's no more, like if, if they're like, oh, all the residential areas are going away, people will start buying them up. Because right now, people are not moving in and it's really annoying. 
I don't know where they're living. Look, the rich area, no one's living here. That's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. You know what's crazy is we have 12,000 people in our city now and the residential areas are still not used up. Where are you people living? Do I just have a utopia of like 12,000 hobos? Like drifters and, you know, like just people who don't have a permanent fixed address ever? What is happening? Um, all right. Are you guys ready for the city to go bankrupt? We really might have to burn it down for the insurance money. I'm not joking. It's November of 1905. Here's December. We're, we're almost at 13,000 people, which is pretty sweet. Um, literally still don't have any established houses in the city, so I don't know what's happening. Um, we... <laughs> everything is funded at zero. Okay, time to bring in some taxes. We're going for five. Five percent. Let's see what this does to our city. Uh, roads deteriorating due to lack of funds. Yep, that's about par for course. So the city is living on a budget of zero this year, and we're trying to bring in 5% income. Let's see how that works. We can't afford anything. We have zero dollars in the bank. We are on the fastest speed, though. All right. I want to see these residential areas, like, actually, like, populate. That's my goal. Roads are deteriorating. We have no money. I don't know what you want me to do. We need, like, an influx from, like, a, a wealthy billionaire who feels bad for our city. Who, like, grew up here in, like, Hobo Alley and, like, wants to see the city revitalized. Oh, no, look. Oh, no. Our population's shrinking. The crime rate is much too high. More police stations are needed. Are the police 100% funded? They are not. We only have two stations and they're 0% funded, which means it's an all-volunteer police force. And I don't know how effective an all-volunteer police force actually is in this world. Uh, roads are deteriorating. Uh-oh. Okay, our plan to totally defund the city to have a taxless paradise seems to have failed. See, this is why we need taxes, people. Nobody likes paying taxes. But, like, look, look what would happen if you really didn't pay taxes. You would live in like a really crappy place <laughs> i mean isn't that is that true in the states like many of the states that have the lowest tax rates also like there's like a lot of like you know disrepair and stuff and the roads and, and the social services and stuff um i mean I, I speak as if i know like i don't i don't know i don't i don't live in uh, all the states i don't even know the states that well so if i'm wrong i'm wrong that's fine but i mean i i, I believe unless i'm mistaken um, if you live in a state that has really low taxes, you probably don't, you know, there's probably lots of, like, problems with, like, things are underfunded and the public schools suck and there's not many good public services and so on. Canada has always been the opposite. People hate taxes, but everyone pays them and people don't complain that much because, like, you kind of need taxes, you know. We, taxes suck. Taxes suck, but you, you kind of need them. Hey, by the way, we have our first apartment complex, so for some reason... Now that the population's deteriorating, there's urban development. I do not understand. I don't understand what's going on. 10,000 people, we're just shrinking. My, my plan, my plan <laughs> did not work. Oh God, I just want to see how much money we're gonna get. Wait, what is this by the way? This little icon here, is that anything? No. Let's see what the mayor has to say to us. Uh, I don't see problem areas. Are you blind? My, my city, this truly is now becoming like the urban warfare environment from like Judge Dredd where it's full of like criminals who are like firing at each other from like windows and stuff. Only it's 1906 so people are firing Tommy guns out of their like porch of their one house estate on like a giant plot of land. So it's not exactly like Judge Dredd. It's very little like Judge Dredd in fact. But uh, Seaside Stadium is still uh, wowing people with their sporting events. Yeah, yeah, we got crime. Trust me, I know we have a crime problem. My plan to replace the police force with a single vigilante who watched his parents be gunned down in an alley as a child didn't come, tr didn't, didn't work out. The vigilante turns out one man cannot police an entire city. It's awesome in movies, but it doesn't work in real life. Um, okay, nine thousand. We're just, we're just shrinking. We're just shrinking by by droves i think here's the problem i expanded too quickly i got too excited i should have built like four industrial areas three commercial three residential and let that build i should have like slow instead of building like 
26 residential plots, like a whole design neighborhood. This city was overplanned from the get-go. The city, that train is like, oh, uh, that part of the track doesn't exist, people. Uh, no more going to uh, Seaside Stadium. Oh, yeah, we can't go that way either. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, people can't even get to the places they need to go now. And the White House down here. Lovely Seaside Estate. No power, no roads. Nobody's ever been there. Uh, 7,200 people. We're gonna, I think our city's literally gonna be a ghost town. Alright, you know what? Burn it down for the insurance money. That's what we do. Burn it down. Do it. Oh, I was gonna say, did it do anything? We're just sitting here. Have you built a fire department? I would strongly suggest doing so before the city's ash. Alright, where's the fire? Where's the fire? Any fire? I don't see it. They might not have programmed that into the game yet. Oh man, we can't even burn our own city down. Okay, hold on. Let's see if we can summon a monster. Let's summon the Kraken. All right, monster, deal with our city. Deal with our, pa our pathetic attempt to build a Sim City. A giant monster has been seen. All right. Reveal yourself, giant monster. Oh, there's a go-to option. Go-to. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, he's what? He's dude. You're so far from the city. Where are you going? Giant monster. <laughs> what what a letdown of a monster. You know, oh, and he's gone. When you summon a demon from hell to take out your city, you expect results. Where is that fire, by the way? Is it somewhere else on the island? Did did anything light on fire? Nothing. Nothing. There's there is no fire. All right. 5300 people. We're we're going to be back down to 2000. So literally people in my city don't want to pay taxes what I've learned. When there's no taxes, they will move into a dilapidated crime paradise. But when there is even 5% taxes, everyone just like straight up bails. People are like, F this man, I ain't paying tax to the man. And then they bail. And then we get left with uh, uh, basically Detroit. This is Detroit now. It is completely run down. Vast swaths of open abandoned land. It is just, it is not a good place to be. So there you go. Um, well, well, we'll wait for our final yearly report, but I kind of have a feeling this is where we should tap out with SimCity for the NES. Um, I mean, like all the SimCities we've played, we're just messing around with it, having fun. Um, there really is no end point to SimCity, so, you know, b besides building a productive city, which we utterly failed at, I mean... <laughs> Uh, I would have liked to have a productive city for you. I tried, but uh, I think I just overexpanded way too fast. Um, also, as I say, this is a prototype, so it is always possible that the mechanics are not programmed in correctly yet. I've never had a, a city fail this hard in any SimCity, but, you know, I might have done something really obviously wrong at the beginning, and if so, uh, I'm not surprised. Um... But if you were interested in trying SimCity, the unreleased prototype for the NES, you can actually find it. Uh, we made 195 bucks. That's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. You know what? All we have enough money to do is this. Is like actually power up the mayoral station. It's like all we can afford to do. Boom! And uh, I guess let's just continue bulldozing Slumville over here. Because you people, oh, if you're not gonna, if you're not gonna live in these buildings, you don't deserve them. Let's see what happens. There, yeah, I'm just, I evicted a whole bunch of people and just like threw them out on the street. You people don't deserve houses. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna increase demand by reducing supply. There we go. Let's see if that does anything. Let's just bulldoze all of this. You know, if the city, if you want to shrink the city, we'll unzone everything. I'll do it, people. I will do it. I will, bull I will raise this city to the ground. There you go. A glorious victory screen for you. Um, but yes, if you're interested in playing SimCity for the NES, you can get the ROM over at the Internet Archive. I'll put a link in the description below. And actually, if you're, you're curious about the story of where this, this uh, ROM came from and the backstory be behind SimCity for the NES, I mean, I told you guys a little bit about it, but I'm not a historian by trade. I'm just kind of chatting. There's a, there's a great article over at the Video Game Historical Foundation, which I'll link to in the description below, that gives you the first-hand account, because these are the people who actually found the ROM and, and saved the game. 
Um, they do all sorts of other preservation activities for old retro games. So I definitely recommend checking them out just because. Oh my god, the train is totally trapped, by the way. It's stuck in this small little area. <laughs> oh, and this... Oh, no! Oh, no, we accidentally depowered the mayor. Uh, that we can't abide. Um, oh, no, we, we can't afford anything. Hold on. Can we... Oh, we can just barely... We had 12 bucks in our pocket. Just enough to power up the mayor. The mayor's house. Oh, and there's already the roads deteriorated on the way to my house. Oh, well, whatever. Um, 2,300 people. This city was only ever designed for 2,300. No matter what I do, it's only 2,300 people want to be in this city. I don't know what it is. It's almost like this is not a good place to live. It's almost as if this... It's almost as if this hellscape is not a desirable place to live. Boy, we really messed this up. Um, but yes, yeah, so I'll put all these links in the description down below. Definitely check it out. This is a very cool sort of piece of gaming history. Um, and as I said, I just wanted to play around with it today uh, because it had just come out. Um, and yeah, what a great Christmas present for the retro gaming community. Anyway, guys, if you have been enjoying this video, if you like the idea of SimCity for the NES and it was kind of neat to kind of try something different, don't forget to like the video. Uh, don't forget to be subscribed and all that jazz. And uh, if you do want to tune back in tomorrow, as I say, I will be live streaming. Um, it's, you know, I, I don't do this very often, but I've always, I always say I want to do more of it. So I had the time. So tomorrow we're going to play Donkey Kong Country. My hope is to beat the game, but we'll just kind of see how that goes. Um, we'll at least get very far in it, though. Anyway, until next time, my friends, uh, take care of yourselves, and, uh, keep, keep searching for those old retro gaming artifacts. If you find one, get in touch with the Video Game Historical Foundation. And, uh, <laughs> don't live in a city that I am the mayor of. It's all my advice for you guys today, anyway. Uh, alright guys, peace. Seriously, that monster was so disappointing. I can't even find him now. I've been looking for like 10 minutes. I'm pretty sure he's gone. He probably took one look at our city and he's like, you want me to destroy that? He's like, I can't do any more damage than the mayor's already done. It's like kicking disabled people. I'm just not going to do it. The monster refused to attack our city. That is the shape our city was in. <laughs> That's super embarrassing.